Today we are journeying back in time to a civilization that has left a mark on our world, but whose true complexity is often overlooked, the Byzantine Empire. Positioned at the crossroads of Europe and Asia, the Byzantine Empire was a beacon of power, culture and innovation for over a thousand years. This was an empire that stood the test of time, outliving the Western Roman Empire by a millennium and bridging the gap between the ancient and medieval worlds. But what made the Byzantine Empire so good? What were its defining features and innovations? And how did it shape the world as we know it? Stick around and let's explore a little, shall we? The Byzantine Empire, known at the time as the Eastern Roman Empire, was essentially Rome's eastern continuation after the fall of the Western Roman Empire in the 5th century. But why did it survive while its Western counterpart crumbled? The answer, as it turns out, lies as much in geography as it does in strategy. The capital, Constantinople, now known as Istanbul, was a city ripe with advantages, built by Emperor Constantine in 330 CE on the site of the ancient city of Byzantium, hence the name Byzantine. It was situated at the crossroads of Europe and Asia. This strategic location on the Bosporus Strait allowed it to control the key trading routes linking the east and the west. Imagine having a doorway that leads to two different worlds, and you're the one holding the key. But it wasn't just about geography. The empire's success lay in its ability to adapt and evolve. As the Western Roman Empire fell into decay, the Eastern Empire, the Byzantine, embraced a more flexible administrative system. It had a more stable economy, supported by a complex system of taxation and a thriving trade network, both land-based and maritime. Moreover, the Byzantine Empire was more defensible. The city of Constantinople was surrounded by water on three sides, and its landward side was protected by massive walls, known as the Theodosian Walls. These walls were one of the most complex fortification systems ever created, and they kept the city safe from numerous sieges for hundreds of years. So you see, the Byzantine Empire's survival was not a product of luck or chance. It was a result of strategic location, robust trade, flexible governance, and formidable defences, elements that helped it navigate the turbulent waters of history for more than a thousand years. The Byzantine Empire has left us with a rich architectural legacy a testament to their advanced engineering skills and artistic flair. Their architectural style was unique, blending elements of Roman, Greek and Eastern designs into a distinctive Byzantine aesthetic. But it was more than just an amalgamation of styles, it was a creative fusion, something new and entirely their own. Perhaps the most iconic symbol of Byzantine architecture is the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul. Originally constructed in the 6th century during the reign of Emperor Justinian, it was an architectural marvel of its time and it continues to amaze us today. Let's take a closer look. The Hagia Sophia, or Holy Wisdom, was the third church to occupy that site, the previous two having been destroyed in riots. But this was not just another church, it was designed to be the most magnificent church in the Christian world, a symbol of Byzantine power and piety. Its architects, Anthemius of Tralis and Isidore of Miletus, were not simply builders. They were physicists, mathematicians and engineers. The building's crowning glory is its massive dome, spanning over 31 metres in diameter and perched some 56 metres high. This was an engineering feat unparalleled in its time. The dome seems to float, thanks to the ingenious design that distributes the weight of the dome down into the building's solid piers through a system of pendentives and semi-domes. The interior is bathed in natural light filtering through the 40-arch windows around the dome's base, creating an ethereal effect that was said to symbolize the divine. Another architectural gem is the Basilica of San Vitale in Ravenna, Italy. Built in the 6th century, it's known for its stunning mosaics depicting various biblical scenes and figures, including Emperor Justinian and Empress Theodora. These mosaics are not just decoration, they're storytelling in glass and stone, reflecting the Byzantine belief in the interconnection of church, empire and heaven. The Byzantines also excelled in fortification architecture, as seen in the walls of Constantinople, which successfully defended the city for centuries. These walls were a complex system of inner and outer walls, moats and towers, demonstrating the Byzantines' deep understanding of defensive strategy. So, when we speak of Byzantine architecture, 
we are talking about structures that were not only aesthetically striking, but also technically innovative and symbolically charged. They were built to inspire awe, to convey power and faith, and to stand the test of time. And stand they have, as enduring monuments to a civilization that fused art, science and spirit in stone and mortar. If we gaze back into history, we find that many of the works of ancient scholars would have been lost to time if not for the Byzantine Empire. But how did the Byzantines, situated in a world of constant change and upheaval, manage to preserve these invaluable texts? The Byzantine Empire was the heir to the Hellenistic world. Greek was the language of the empire, and so they were the direct inheritors of the rich tradition of Greek literature, philosophy and science. And yet this alone doesn't explain their dedication to preserving these texts. The Byzantines had a deep reverence for the ancient Greek scholars. They saw themselves as the guardians of this knowledge, with a cultural and almost sacred duty to protect and preserve these texts for future generations. This reverence was reflected in their educational system, which placed a heavy emphasis on the study of ancient Greek texts, including Homer, Aristotle and Plato. Byzantine scholars painstakingly copied these ancient works by hand. They created beautifully crafted manuscripts, often embellishing them with intricate illustrations and ornate decorations. These manuscripts were stored in monastic libraries and other repositories across the empire, some of which survived the empire's fall in 1453 and are still standing today. But the Byzantines did more than just copy these texts— they also studied and commented on them, producing a rich body of scholarship that further enriched the original works. They explored the philosophical implications of Plato, the scientific theories of Aristotle, the medical observations of Hippocrates, and more. Furthermore, the preservation of classical texts wasn't limited to Greek works. Byzantine scholars also translated and preserved works from other cultures. For instance, they translated many works of ancient Persian literature into Greek, thereby saving them from oblivion. But perhaps the most consequential act of preservation was their transmission of these texts to the Arab world. During the Middle Ages, while much of Western Europe was in the so-called Dark Ages, the Arab world was experiencing a cultural and intellectual renaissance. Byzantine scholars played a key role in this renaissance by transmitting the works of ancient Greek scholars to the Arab world, where they were translated into Arabic and studied intensively. As we've journeyed through the Byzantine Empire's vibrant history, we've seen its strength, its wisdom, and its cultural richness. But like all empires, it wasn't immune to the passage of time and the shifts of power that shape our world. So, what led to its downfall? The fall of the Byzantine Empire was not a sudden overnight event. Instead, it was a gradual process that occurred over several centuries, marked by both internal strife and external pressures. Internally, the empire was often plagued by political instability and succession crises. The Byzantine throne was not always inherited. It was often seized by force, leading to periods of chaos and infighting. This instability was further compounded by religious disputes such as the iconoclasm controversy we discussed earlier, which caused deep divisions within Byzantine society. Additionally, the empire's economy began to falter. High taxation, constant warfare and the loss of trade routes gradually drained the empire's wealth. This economic decline weakened the empire's ability to maintain its military defences and infrastructure. Externally, the empire faced numerous threats. To the east, the rise of Islam in the 7th century resulted in the loss of key eastern provinces such as Syria and Egypt. These territories were not only economically vital, but also culturally significant, and their loss was a major blow to the empire. Then, from the 11th century onward, the Seljuk Turks began to encroach on Byzantine territory. The empire called for aid from Western Europe, leading to the Crusades, which, while initially helpful, would eventually cause more harm than good. The Fourth Crusade in particular was disastrous, with the Crusaders sacking Constantinople in 1204 and establishing a short-lived Latin Empire in its place. The Empire would recover and re-establish itself, but the damage was done. The final blow came in the form of the Ottoman Turks. In 1453, after a lengthy siege, they captured Constantinople, marking the end of the Byzantine Empire. The city, renamed Istanbul, would become the capital of the Ottoman Empire. If we dive into the military aspect of the Byzantine Empire, 
we discover fascinating innovations and strategies that played a crucial role in its survival and dominance. The Byzantines, after all, didn't merely inherit the military traditions of Rome, they adapted and evolved them to suit their unique circumstances. One of the most iconic elements of Byzantine warfare was the theme system. This was a form of military and administrative organization that was instituted during the 7th century. As a response to the threats posed by the Arabs and the Persians, the empire was divided into several themes, or provinces, each overseen by a military governor. These governors would recruit soldiers from the local population, who were granted land in return for military service. This ensured that the empire had a steady supply of troops, and that these troops had a vested interest in defending their land. This system was not only innovative but also remarkably effective, enabling the Byzantine Empire to defend its vast territories for centuries. In terms of weaponry, the Byzantines were famous for their use of Greek fire. This incendiary weapon was a closely guarded state secret, and its composition remains a mystery to this day. Greek fire, deployed from tubes or siphons, could continue burning even on water, making it a devastating weapon during naval battles. It was instrumental in several key victories, including the defense of Constantinople from Arab sieges. Byzantine military manuals, such as the Tactica of Emperor Leo VI, also demonstrate the empire's advanced understanding of warfare. These manuals provided detailed instructions on tactics, formations, siege warfare, and even the use of various weapons. They indicate a level of strategic sophistication that was quite remarkable for the time. Finally, it's worth mentioning the Varangian Guard. This was an elite unit of the Byzantine army, composed primarily of Norsemen and later Anglo-Saxons. The Varangian Guard served as the emperor's personal bodyguards and were renowned for their loyalty and their ferocity in battle. In conclusion, the military innovations of the Byzantine Empire were essential to its longevity and power. From the theme system to Greek fire, from comprehensive military manuals to the Varangian Guard, these advancements showcase the Byzantine Empire's adaptability and ingenuity in the face of evolving threats and challenges. They remind us that in the grand chess game of history, innovation can often make the difference between survival and extinction. And as always, thanks for watching.